12 News at 10 with Mark Curtis and Caribe Devine starts now. And developing now at 10, a mistrial declared on a murder charge for the man accused of killing Lee Rice. A jury found the suspect, Alfredo Gutierrez, not guilty of kidnapping and aggravated assault, but couldn't reach a verdict on the most serious charge. Tonight, Rice's mother, who's been waiting years to see justice for her son, is devastated. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Curtis. And I'm Kariba Devine. 12 News journalist Bianca Bono sat down with her now that the trial has come to an end. And Bianca, how is she holding up? Well, guys, she is angry. Since October of 2020, when her son was brutally murdered, Colleen Rice has only wanted one thing, for the person responsible to be held accountable. She hoped that would happen at the end of this trial. It hasn't sunk in yet. Colleen Rice is still trying to understand how all of the years she spent fighting for her son have led to this. On the charge of second degree murder as follows, deadlocked. A jury deadlocked, unable to convict or acquit Alfredo Gutierrez of second degree murder, finding him not guilty of kidnapping and aggravated assault. I just totally do not understand. In October of 2020, Colleen's son, Lee Rice, was murdered. His body was found hidden inside of a blue barrel in Gutierrez's brother's Phoenix home in the guest bedroom Gutierrez stayed in. Rice had blunt force injuries and he was zip tied around his wrists, ankles and neck. What really shook me was to find out how tight the zip tie was around his neck. For Colleen, every day of the trial was painful, but she pushed through, hoping at the end she'd get the justice she's been waiting nearly four years for. It didn't happen. I am just so royally pissed that in the state of Arizona, county of Maricopa, city of Phoenix, you're allowed to have a dead body of a murdered person in your house, upside down on a barrel. Rice notes there was a lack of DNA evidence and fingerprints, but she can't comprehend how the presence of her son's body alone wouldn't constitute a conviction on at least one of the charges. I thought that was kidnapping, but the jury found him innocent of that. As Colleen tries to hold on to the good memories from Lee's childhood, she's not sure where she goes from here. I'm done with hope. Gutierrez's second degree murder charge was dismissed without prejudice meaning the state can refile it in the future. In the meantime, Colleen will continue to speak out about her son's life that was senselessly taken away. The whole thing is disturbing. And a spokesperson for the Maricopa County Attorney's Office tells me tonight that as it stands, there are no plans to refile charges, but that will change if law enforcement presents new evidence. But guys, the reality, the individual who murdered Lee Rice is still out there. We're live in studio tonight. Bianca Bono, 12 News. You got a feel for that mom. All right, Bianca, thanks. Our other top story tonight, record-breaking heat in the valley. The temperature, if you can believe this, hit 116 today. And worse yet, the excessive heat isn't over. Meteorologist Lindsay Riley is here with our weather impact forecast. Hey, Lindsay. Hey, the, today was the hottest September day. At least it tied for the hottest September temperature that we've ever had. 116 out at Sky Harbor. That ties a 1950 record. And we have one more day of excessive heat to go. This excessive heat warning goes through 8 p.m. tomorrow. Highs once again for the 57th time this summer. We'll get above 110. We are still at 100 and three in Phoenix and 106 the 10 p.m. temperature in Lake Havasu 69 in Winslow 81 in Page some other temps around the valley no, we're at in the 90s in Saguaro Lake Glendale at 101 and 100 in Avondale hour by hour tomorrow we will start off the morning still in the 90s sunshine and no storms expected tomorrow but on our monsoon meter we have twos for northern Arizona and the White Mountains just an isolated chance there, but the rest of the state will be dry. Mark. Thanks. We'll see you again in a few minutes. New at 10. Chances are you've heard about search and rescue dogs, but how about a search and rescue otter? Yeah, that's right. The cute, intelligent animals are being put to a whole new use, and one of those otters is from right here in Arizona. 12 News journalist Troy Hayden is joining us now in studio with this very unique story. <laughs> It's definitely interesting for sure. My wife Christy runs a Wildlife World Zoo and she tipped me off on this story. It's a good one. 
The zoo recently donated an otter to a search and rescue group in Florida. And because otters are so smart and the only mammal that can detect odors underwater, the group thinks this little otter will soon do very big things. We'll see. What? What do you think? Meet Splash, one of the world's first ever search and rescue otters. An animal born right here in the valley, now being trained to find evidence and victims using his very unique abilities. Veteran search and rescue diver Mike Hadsell came up with this program. I had read uh, an article that said that otters were the only mammals that have odor detection underwater. And I kept thinking to myself, well, why can't we get these guys to work for us? Is it possible to do that? Not only is it possible, it's working. Search and rescue diving is dangerous work. Swift currents, near zero visibility, underwater hazards. Divers use guide ropes to sometimes blindly follow grids in their search, using their hands to feel for victims and objects. In Florida, has its own unique water search challenges. They get into a canal or a river and an alligator gets to them before we do. The gator will take the remains and stuff it somewhere and it makes it very difficult to find. And so the dogs get us into the area, but they can't get us from the boat to the bottom and show us exactly where it's at. So the otter was designed to get us from the boat to the bottom and show us exactly where the remains are located. That's amazing. It's crazy how they can do that. Jeff Beals is the aquarium curator at the Wildlife World Zoo in the West Valley. The zoo donated Splash free of charge to the search and rescue program in Florida. Jeff knows otters have amazing skills for this job. Not only can they smell items underwater, they can also pick up on, on cues, on trails, smell trails. So, you know, an item might be way down there, but because it's been dissolved underwater and the water is moving toward the otter, they can pinpoint right to it because they get the trail. So otters don't exactly smell water. They smell their own breath under the water. It's an interesting process. It's a bubble technique. What they'll do, Troy, is they'll go underwater and they will expire um, a, a breath cycle. So uh, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, and they'll- Shooting the, the air out of their yeah, mouth and Yeah, shooting the bubbles and pulling it right back in. Like I said, up to about 10 times a second. Um, and that allows them to more or less taste the water, smell the water. So right now, Mike is working daily with Splash in his pool in Florida, helping him hone his skills, hiding a scent, in this case, behind his pool light, and Splash goes right to it. And even though he's not fully trained yet, Splash is already helping solve crimes. He found a key piece of evidence while Mike was recently at an active scene, and he was persuaded by searchers to put Splash into the water to help. So he sniffed out the scent and went down and alerted to it. Threw a marker and the diver went in, and there it was. In the next couple of months, Splash should be fully trained to help divers go directly to victims and evidence. Skeptics once questioned the idea, but now using a search and rescue otter doesn't seem so crazy. Oh, that's nuts. You can't do it, all this stuff. And now they're watching the videos. They're, they're seeing him, his training progress. And I was just out on a case this weekend, and the guy from Fish and Wildlife came up to me. and He says, I want you to get me an otter because I want to do this too. So we may see more search and rescue otters. Mike says Splash is another month or two of training before he's really ready to work in the field. So we'll follow up with him soon to see how Splash is doing. Tonight, only on 12 News, part five of our iTeam series, He Made Me Do It. This is an investigation into how a teen from Vermont became a suspect in a violent jewelry store robbery and whether her claims that she was uh, trafficked and abused were ignored. For months, the I-Team's Erica Stapleton retraced Helen Simmons' path, uncovering what law enforcement did or didn't do to investigate the teen's accusations. We do want to warn our viewers that the video they're about to see may be difficult to watch. First, let's give you a recap of the series and then an excerpt of Part 5, which is unbelievable. A robbery at a jewelry store in Anthem leads to a police chase in California. Two suspects arrested. Matthew Jones stays quiet. Can you tell me what's going on? Oh, I'd rather speak when I have an attorney with me in person. But Helen Simmons... I'm so scared. ...breaks down. What's the worst thing he ever made you do? He made me take all these pills. Admitting. And he told me that. If I don't want to rob the diamond store, then he's going to kill me. They're the suspects in the jewelry store and telling investigators. That's when he bit me right here. That's when he gave me the black eye. She was a victim too by the man she just met a few weeks before. 
When Helen Simmons was first arrested, she was documented as a suspect and a victim. But two years later, when she's going to prison for the robbery case, her allegations of abuse are still up in the air. The I-team reviewed all available records where Helen is documented as a victim and found law enforcement and Helen were not on the same page. You want to be a victim of the domestic violence with him? Yeah. Helen said she never heard from police in Huntington Beach after this interview and that she had no idea Costa Mesa and Westminster were involved until the I-team tracked down the cases and told her. Another shock for Helen. Both Westminster and Costa Mesa Police Departments wrote in their files that she was not a victim of sex trafficking. Costa Mesa's report said Helen was having sex with the men by choice and had multiple attempts to leave. Westminster Police wrote that Helen changed her story and said she was consensually having sex with people for money and that Helen was posting photos of herself to meet men. Westminster Police wrote that this came from the Huntington Beach Police Report. But if you listen, that's not really what Helen said. Basically, he would post my picture, I post pictures of me, like dressed, naked, whatever, make a profile of me and he would get these guys, like these guys would text me and stuff and he would text them, talk to them. Is this something where you were agreeing to have sex with them for money if you got to keep the money? But now he's stealing the money from you when you get back to the car? Yeah. Like is, it, is it like that or is he forcing you to go in and get raped? Because well, there, there's a big difference. Yeah, so let me explain it. So I told him, I'm like, I don't want to be around you. I don't like you. I want to leave as soon as I can. And he's like, well, you cannot leave me until we both have enough money to be set by ourselves. And so he was like, you have to do these things in order to leave me, in order to have the money to leave me. And what do you mean by these things? Like, uh, random people. How much money was he, did he give you an amount that you each needed to get? Um, 350 at the least. Like 350 bucks? Yeah, at the least. That doesn't go very far with inflation where it's at, you know? When we showed this to Dominique. That's coercion. She didn't talk about the force or the fraud, right, trickery, but, but that's what coercion looks like. If you do this, you sell sex for me, I will release you. Are you ever forced to go have sex with a guy from him, or is this all just to make the money to get out? Yeah, it's all just like the money to get out. Okay. What do you make of how the officers are talking to her? I really hesitate to criticize other people's interview techniques. I think they were trying to make her comfortable. I think they were trying to be really casual about it. It's not really up to them to educate her on what tra is trafficking, what is not. But what I think they got from her is that he made the decision about how much needed to be made. He made the decision that's how the money was going to be made. And I think there's good evidence on a trafficking case from my understanding. As Helen's cases in California stand now, Westminster police wrote that due to lack of information and evidence and the inability to interview Simmons, this crime is unfounded and the case will be closed pending contact with Simmons. Helen was in jail when this case was filed and said no one at Westminster police ever reached out to her. Our request to talk with officers in Westminster about this case all went unanswered. Same with the Huntington Beach Police Department. Helen said she never heard from the Costa Mesa Police Department either. Still, that agency turned the case over to the Orange County District Attorney's Office. The DA rejected it, saying there wasn't enough evidence and could be resubmitted if there was further investigation. I think that we missed our opportunities to support a person who'd been victimized because we were clouded, we as the big we, we were clouded by her participation in a crime. As of last check with the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, Helen's two cases in Arizona remain open. And next week, we have our final chapter in our series, He Made Me Do It, where we hear from the judge and victims in the jewelry store robbery, while Helen Simmons and Matthew Jones are sentenced to prison. Erica Stapleton, 12 News. Erica, thanks. Obviously a very complicated story. Right now, you can watch all five episodes of He Made Me Do It on our 12 News YouTube channel. And once you get there, you can also find a list of resources for anyone who's looking for help. Coming up.